Good evening. Good, evening. Good to see all of you tonight. Uh, I have high hopes that today we could all agree it was a beautiful day. Temperature? Okay, good, right? I know we disagree on temperature, too hot, too cold, but today <coughs> was just about perfect, I think. So anyway, uh, glad we enjoyed that blessing, of course, from the Lord, and it was good to see the, the sunshine again today. What a great day it was. So good to gather here tonight. Uh, this is our last regular midweek service uh, with this series we have. We're going to look at uh, Absalom tonight. Do you remember who Absalom is? Good, I will tell you. <laughs> we'll talk more about it. It's one of King David's sons. Yeah. Um, and you remember that it, scripture talks about Absalom being very handsome, right? He's just very kind of thing. Uh, he had this long flowing hair. Remember what happened with the hair as he was fleeing? The hair got caught in the tree and anyway so we're going to talk about that tonight and, and just some other things there so uh glad again to have you here let's rise greet those around us and start with our opening song In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Put not your trust in princes. In a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. The Spirit and the Church cry out. All those who await his appearance pray. Come, Lord Jesus. The whole creation pleads. Come, Lord Jesus. Awaiting the Son of Man and the Son of God, we implore. Come, Lord Jesus.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who allowed your only begotten Son to die on the tree of the cross, that we might be redeemed and adopted sons and daughters of the King of kings. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we uh, go into the responsive prayer, we don't have a spot for any specific prayers, uh, but tonight I do want to make sure and share with you that uh, Nathan Waxman uh, was called to his eternal rest uh, this morning. Uh, Nathan had had uh, an incident there at the nursing home, a medical incident, and um, been on hospice for the past several days, and uh, funeral arrangements are still pending, uh, but we will post those and share those as soon as we, as we know. So we pray for the Watson family tonight as they grieve. <clears throat> During this Advent season of Advent, we pray, Come, Lord Jesus, true son of Adam. Come, Lord Jesus. True son of Abraham. Come, Lord Jesus. True son of David. Come, Lord Jesus. True Son of God. Come, Lord Jesus. True Son of Man. Come, Lord Jesus. That we might receive adoption as sons. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray, um, and give peace and comfort to those who grieve. Lord, we do look forward to that day when you will return, raising us all who have gone before you in faith to eternal life. And tonight we pray especially for the family of Nathan Waxman as you have called him home. Lord, we thank you for the faith that you granted him this earthly life and for all the blessings. We ask you to comfort a family who grieves right now and pray that you comfort them and help us to continue to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and the day when he will return, raising us to those blessings of eternal life that we have through him. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who has taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading tonight is from 2 Samuel 18. Uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, concerning Absalom. And uh, again, there was a, a conflict between David and Absalom. Um, David is about to find out the result of that conflict. Um, and we'll see David's response. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof of the gate by the wall, and when he lifted up his eyes and looked, he saw a man running alone. The watchman called out and told the king, and the king said, if he is alone, the, the, the runner, there is news in his mouth, and he drew nearer and nearer. The watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the gate and said, see another man running alone. The king said, he also brings good news. The watchman said, I think the running of the first is like the running of Ahiamaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, he is a good man and comes with good news. Then Ahiamaz cried out to the king, all is well. And he bowed down before the king with his face to the earth and said, Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against my lord the king. The king said, is it well with the young man Absalom? Ahiamaz answered, when Joab sent the king's servant, your servant, I saw a great commotion, but I do not know what it was. And the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. And behold, the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good news for my lord the king, for the Lord had, has delivered to you this day from the hand of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up against you for the evil be like that young man. And the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. 
And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you? O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And their response here, sorry, there we go. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Continue with our hand. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm going to start with an assumption that I'll share here in a second, but before I do, a, a quick survey, because y'all are going to be the ones kind of affirming my assumption. Uh, how many parents, if you're a parent, raise your, raise your hand here for me. All right. which, which, by the way, this is one of the times y'all actually participated in, and everybody, you can put them down, sorry. Yeah, good. All right. Um, my, my assumption I'm starting with tonight is that uh, parents, generally speaking, want the best for their kids. I'm looking around at the parents. Jane, you're not shaking your head. I don't know. <laughs> Maddie's sitting right there. You should nod. <laughs> I know how that's going. Uh, Right? Generally speaking. Now, of course, there's times in, in our lives, and we know that that doesn't always happen, there's all, you know, in this, in this broken world. Uh, but generally speaking, parents want what's best for the kids. I, of course, don't have any first-hand experience here um, for myself. I do have experience as an uncle to five nieces, and I can tell you for that distance of a relationship, I absolutely want the best for those, for those five young ladies and, and all that's going on in their lives. And uh, and, and want to do whatever I can to help, right? And it's been amazing to watch my siblings, you know, as the oldest of the four, and to watch these kids who, my, my siblings, who messed everything up when we were growing up. I mean, of course, not as good as this guy, but this is for those siblings that might be watching tonight. So, of course, give them a hard time. But no, it's been, it's been amazing to watch my siblings and their spouses uh, care for... for these children they brought into the world and all that goes into that and to watch that here at the congregation right parents generally want the best for their kids and will do those things um, 
It's that parental love that we see on display today in the story that we read of David and Absalom. I'm going to give you a little bit more backstory than you got today, right? Because you come into this spot where David's waiting at the gate, and I said there was this conflict, but what got us to that conflict? Um, Absalom is one of 19 sons that King David had, right? And that's just the sons, never mind any daughters that were also in there. We hear about 19 sons. Amnon was the oldest. That's significant tonight. We want to know this is the oldest one. He was supposed to inherit the throne. Things start out bad, though, in the story. He falls in love with his half-sister, Tamar. It's not good, okay? Um, and Because this isn't, he's falling in love in a good way. He becomes obsessed with her, romantically desires her. He pretends to be sick so that uh, she is one of those that he knows will be brought to take care of him. He, he gets her alone. He forces himself upon her and violates her and then blames her for it. And, and kicks her out of, of wherever it is and has her sent away. Well, to add insult to injury, then David, dad to both, right, doesn't do anything to Amnon. He, he ignores the whole situation. David finds out what Amnon has done. He's, he's upset, but he doesn't do anything. Absalom finds out, and Absalom is full brother to Tamar, okay? He finds out what Amnon has done. He's furious with his half-brother for doing this. He finds out that his dad didn't, didn't do anything. He gets even madder about this. And two years, David takes to plot how to kill Amnon. Okay? Um, and I'm, I'll pause here because somebody noted last week with the stories that these, the Old Testament is full of some highly dramatic stories. Your, your uh, soap operas couldn't hold a candle to some of the things going on here, right? There's lots of stuff happening. Okay? David plots to kill Amnon, does, and, and, and flees because of it, because he knows his dad's going to be mad about that. So he flees, uh, flees the country. Okay. Um, after a time, David reaches out, wants Amnon to come back, or Absalom to come back, rather. Uh, finally, he does. Absalom comes back. But then as he gets back, right away, he, he is still upset with his dad. Um, and he begins to plot against King David, how he will overthrow, right? Because now their oldest son is done. Um, how can I take the kingdom from my dad? And Absalom sits at the gate. I told you he's this great looking guy. Um, and anytime somebody came to the city for a conflict, Absalom would be there and, and he would kind of put on this show and say, gosh, if, if I was in charge, here's what I would do. And he begins to befriend these people and time passes three years altogether. And he finally has enough connections and all of these people that he is kind of made to be friends with him, he gets the folks together and rises up against his dad, uh, trying to overthrow the kingdom. Uh, David, King David, decides he's not going to fight his son over this, and he flees. Okay, so King David gets away. At least he's not going to fight him now. He doesn't want there to be bloodshed. Um, he goes away, gathers up the folks that support him, and so now you have a battle brewing between King David and his supporters on the one hand, and Absalom and his supporters on the other and a fight's gonna ensue. David sends uh, the forces to, to attack and says there's, there's one thing, don't hurt my son Absalom, capture him, whatever. You know, we don't, I don't want him to die. And that's where we come into the story today. You heard what happened. The messengers show up, they announce to King David uh, that his son was killed. And you heard the words, right? As he was going up to the chamber over the gate. Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you? Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. This is a man filled with grief. Despite everything that Absalom had done wrong, his father still loved him dearly. He did not want this to be the situation, okay? And it's here that I want us to see, as we begin to relate, as we hear that story of Absalom, because it's done, right? Um, we, we hear that he dies and the love that the father ha his father has for him. I want us to see the similarities that we have in this story. Um, we are like Absalom. We are rebellious, fighting with the king people, right? Anytime we sin, that is what is happening. We're thumbing our nose. We're, we're saying, I know how to do better. I should be in charge. I'm God. I'm going to do what I want to do. And we have an adversary relationship with God, just as Absalom did with his father, so do we with God, okay? Uh, scripture describes us as enemies of God because of the sin in our lives, all right? 
And, and this is where, of course, the story is different. But, I, but So in the first story, King David says, when his son dies, deserve it as is maybe, and as much as David didn't want it, right? He says, oh, that I was in your place. And I want you to see that in our story, the king from that line of David, because by the way, we remember that David is the descendant of, or is not, he is the ancestor, I should say, of who? King David's the ancestor of Jesus, the true king. And whereas King David says, oh, Absalom, well, that I had died instead of you, Jesus actually makes that happen. Where we were rebellious and fighting, Jesus says, I don't want you to die either. And he steps into the place. He goes to the cross. And where we have done wrong, Jesus takes that punishment. All of your sin is taken upon Jesus. All the goodness of Jesus given to you. And so where David wished he could have done something different, Jesus actually does for us. And it does mean life. Where Absalom died and, is, and, and all things ended, we see that it's all but good for us because our king, our Lord and Savior Jesus did step in our place and died in our place. Of course, rising again, defeating death, and giving us that promise. My hope is as we begin to get closer, or as we continue to get closer, rather, to that Christmas day, that we remember Jesus, the true Son of God, has come to take our place, has come to give us life, and in that we have the hope and comfort that only He can give. Amen. And may that peace of God then which surpasses all understanding may keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from now to, now to life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you.